Ross Gilted. Welcome to the beautiful southwestern corner of Europe, Portugal's Algarve coast. Yesterday, got out for a dive on a boat, but the conditions were pretty suboptimal. Really poor visibility. As always, persevered and managed to shoot a few different fish for dinner. Good morning, first dive day here in Portugal. Today, I'm not diving with who I was expecting to dive with, but the power of spearfishing clubs, one of the Portuguese chaps in my spearfishing club, Antonio, he's an absolute beast in the water. He has an old friend down here in the Algarve who he's hooked me up with and heading out with him today. Apparently he's a bit of an old school Spiro, so I'm sure he knows a thing or two about how to find fish down here. It's time to crack on and not vlog and drive. Conditions topside couldn't have been better. Light and variable winds, low swell, and not a cloud in the sky. These small crabs on the surface were an indication of conditions on the bottom. They are seeking warmer water. As indicated by the crabs, the bottom was cold and dirty with only about three meters visibility, though I was pretty used to these kinds of conditions in the UK. This red-banded seabrim, or semia in Portuguese, came for a look but disappeared quickly into the gloom before I could get my gun around. I had a shot in the dark though. <sighs> Just Mr. Nerta. We spent a few hours searching for cleaner water. The bottom structure looked promising, but with the thermocline, it was going to be hard to find fish. The call was made to head inshore, but the visibility there was even worse. As Zhao dropped me onto the next spot, he said I'd see triggerfish here. He certainly knew this place well. My initial hesitation was to try and look through the triggerfish to see if any gilted seabrim were hanging with them. No gilt head, so trigger it was. This is actually the first trigger fish I've ever speared and I've heard they are delicious. Back down again, this little spot was fishy. A nice little sea bass or robalo as they're known locally. Again, this was a first for me. I couldn't wait to get this octopus into the kitchen. One last dive to get a fish for the skipper. We did one last dive on another spot and I found a small red banded sea brim. Although they were super high on my target species list, it was a bit small and I'd already had enough fish for the next few days. Thank you Zhao and Jose for taking me out spearfishing. If you're in the Algarve and need spearfishing equipment, be sure to head to the Penguin Dive Store in Portimao. Just got back from a very challenging day diving in Portugal. 
the visibility is probably some of the worst that uh, Drow has ever seen, he said, so it made it very difficult. Missed a Urta straight up, but still managed a few fish in the shallows at the end of the day. A little Sargo and a small sea bass. I suspect this sea bass has escaped a farm because of the state of its tail. Um, not monster fish, but still good for us to have on a barbecue or in the oven tonight. We can find wood for the barbecue, but the thing that I'm looking forward to the most... I'm pretty keen to try these out after visiting a lot of Greece in recent years. Absolutely love octopus legs grilled, so I'm hoping I can emulate something that represents uh, that delicious Greek grilled legs, or something a bit more local, which is Portuguese um, style octopus in rice. So we might do a little bit of that tonight as well. The first step to this octopus is to partially boil it. So my friend Izako told me this, he said boil it for about 10 minutes just to tenderize it. You don't want it to go mushy and then cool it down and then you can grill it. Apparently it's a lot better that way. So let's get it in. So I've partially skinned these octopus legs and kept the suckers on because the membrane that was on it was pretty thick and then Next is going to grill the trigger fish and these bad boys, we can't get the wooden oven going so we have to just use a normal griddle. It's a bit tough. You know, for a first time, I'm not too worried. It's not too bad. I can cut it up into small pieces, put it with the rice. Finished product. Looks halfway decent. She's a chewer. <laughs> but it's yummy. I'm going to be honest, this trigger fish looks a little like a dropped pie, but I've been assured that they're very, very tasty. Right. Nice bit of that there. Oof. It's not very fishy, it's just mild and kind of delicious. I'd definitely shoot one again. Not even salt and pepper, right? No salt, no pepper, just a little bit of olive oil in the pan and a hint of lemon as kind of basic as it gets. But when you're traveling, you don't often have the luxuries of your own kitchen, which we certainly don't, but we're lucky to have a kitchen. And yeah. It's delicious. Still a, still a great meal. Yeah, thanks Dan. Unfortunately, the weather hasn't been playing the game on the visibility for diving for us on this particular week. So I'm not sure if we'll get out for another dive. There's a chance maybe in Segres tomorrow, but not holding my breath. I have managed to get out on a last minute dive here in Segres. One of Yodi Lot's friends, Lewis, is kindly taking me out today, out off the rugged west coast of Portugal. The water is a little bit cooler here than anticipated, about 14 or 15 degrees. So. I'm hoping this five millimeter wetsuit cuts the mustard for a few hours. Launching from the southwestern tip of Portugal, we were greeted by enormous cliffs, which are over 50 meters high, a true natural fortress. During the Roman times, Segres was known as Promontorium Sacrum, which literally means end of the world. It looks much better around the corner. The first spot we tried was getting battered by swell and poor visibility, so Lewis took us to an isolated little reef he knew about. Although it was absolutely stacked with trigger fish, bass and gilthead bream were the target at this place. The triggers didn't seem phased by my presence at all, so I kept looking around for a gilt head. Mm -hmm. 
I slowly swam to the upcurrent side of the reef as that's generally where the most fish congregate. Ted. I got one! <laughs> First one ever! Huh? First one ever! Stop. Good, eh? It's not big, but it's alright! Yeah. So many trigger fish! Full. I haven't shot them in any. Yeah, I saw Amber Jack in the middle of them. It's only this big? Yeah, yeah. You leave it alone, too small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one sea bass. Good, eh? Nice spot! But it's good, it's a bit uh, rough, too much because of the sand. Yeah. It's good. It's just sitting by itself. Um, yeah. yeah. It was only one or more? Just one. Yeah. We moved to another area with incredible rock formations and crazy fishermen. <laughs> Those rock fishermen up there are absolutely crazy. How the heck did they get there? Whew. Coastline is very rugged. See a few mullets and little sargos. There's got to be a gilt head around here somewhere. This drop was looking really fishy and the gilt heads turned up, only they are directly behind me coming off the sand and quickly departed. I saw one off on the sand, but I was facing the wrong way. Yeah. You got one? I got one and bigger bow. Bigger bow? Yeah. I saw one sea bass, that was it. Whoa! That's a nice one too. Yeah. Whew. Almost gone, eh? Five kilos? Four kilos? Four, three, four. Very nice. We tried a few more places without any success, so called it a day. Lewis, thank you so much for taking me out and showing me the wild, rugged west coast of Portugal and teaching me all about the diving here. And of course, Yodi, thank you for hooking me up with Lewis. Despite being horribly sunburnt, I'm so stoked to get one of these Gilthead Sea Brim Dorada, as they're known here, on the spear gun. I've wanted one of these for as long as I can remember and to finally get one here in Portugal on the last day. Ah, oh, such a relief. Cannot wait to get stuck into this. Don't have a lot of time tonight, so I'm just going to take the fillets off and pan fry those up. Just a real simple cooking method for this fish. This is where they get their name. The gold dorad, meaning gold in a lot of languages. That's it there.
I've never actually eaten a wild gilt head sea bream. I've heard that they're sensational. The only ones I've eaten are farmed fish at restaurants or from a store. So everybody has been telling me that these things are unreal to eat. Very simply cooked just in butter, mainly because we don't have anything else to cook it in, but Wow. That is bloody delicious. I need to find a whole lot more of those things because I would like to eat a whole lot more of those things. And where we might find some more of those is in our next stop, which is Spain. So if you would like to follow along for the journey, please consider subscribing. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It actually makes a difference for us. We'll see you in Spain. I've never seen anything like this. It's a dinosaur sized one compared to the ones I've seen in the Mediterranean.